praise the Lord. I made it. Lord, have mercy. Oh, this is the reason why we've got to truly be pressing in. I tell you, I've given a short overview about what the Lord was speaking to me during my midnight watch and kind of talking to me about what we need to recognize about opportunity. Now, whatever you do, please share this message. I am just blown away, you know, and it did shake me a little bit about what he is saying. Though He's been saying this for a very long time, but because there are going to be some more storms coming, and we might as well get prepared for that. Remember, I said we keep saying get ready. You know, you can get ready all day long, but you're not prepared. That means you need to be doing some internal and some external things when you're preparing for something. And so, but anyway, get your pen together. I want you to write down what the Spirit of the Lord has said because I don't want to want you to miss anything about this personal opportunity that he spoke to me for me to deliver the word. Now, I wrote it down. I haven't had a chance to type it yet. Um, exactly, uh, so I can be very, very clear about what he's saying. So I'm going to give what he said to me, and the time that he gave it to me was 1.10 a.m. this morning. But I want to make sure that you get this information down so that you can sound the alarm. Now, many of you who are prophetic people, uh, one of the things that he did want me to make sure that you be reminded of, and that is that you are not sounding the alarm. And many of those reasons I'll talk about in just a few minutes when he was sharing with me the message, and then as I began to look back on uh, Micah chapter 2 is what he gave me. I really blew away. It was blown, I was blown away because this is our uh, message that the Lord has us pressing in for the first seven days of every month for the rest of the year. We are fasting the first seven days. Uh, I have been so in the face of our daddy until, uh, I don't know about you, it was almost like I had a leap of a day where I thought it was Saturday. Uh, when actually it is Friday. And those seven days that I was shut in, today is the eighth day, which is the first day that I have been able to go outside and be able to see the, you know, and experience the uh, spiritual weight of the prophetic voice that God is speaking through nature. I began to really, really feel heavy in my spirit. And that's what weight does in the spirit prophetically. He began to show you, and your eyes began to open. Now, these first seven days, I'm inviting you to join us before I give this word. The first seven days of every month, we are fasting water, pure juice, and fruit. I didn't say veggies. Water, pure juice, there ain't nothing pure, and we know that, but healthy juice and fruit. And so, uh, and that is any hour that you seek God about, but our hours corporately are from 6 o'clock p.m. until 7 o'clock a.m. the next morning. So you can eat all the fruits you want, drink all the juice you want, drink all the water you want. But we are pressing in the face of our daddy, and that means some things you're going to have to shut down and get in the face of our daddy. This is the reason why many of us are not packing the power prophetically we can't see, and many of our words are very tainted. And so, and many of the things that we see is very tainted. And so, and that is because we can't have the power we need when we're not it has to say plugged into the vine. That means get in his face. It's going to cost you. Yes, it is. That's why I had to rush in here. You know, I haven't had anything to eat, only been drinking uh, because of the fact that I'm pressing in and want to make sure that I give this word without my belly being full. And then I'll be in my time of prayer after I hang up from here. But I want to make sure that I got in here because he said this morning. So I did make it before 12 noon. I got the word in, but I'm delivering it. Late, and that's what he kept saying to me. We cannot be late. I Sunday, I pray, I pray you hear me now. We cannot be late. No longer can we be late. And I got to repent for being late because I went out to the store, like I said, and was looking at these things and went by my office. But now he is showing me you're late, but you did get the word in. Now I got to get the word out. The word is getting out late, and that's wrong with a whole bunch of us today. We're doing everything else, but. You know, not want to sacrifice these other things, but we need to obey God. You know, we need to put these other things to the side. And so 
and wait. And so I should have just stayed here and delivered the word just like he said I wanted in the morning. Ah, Sunday. It could have over. And so I had to get prepared so that I can share this word. So this is what he said, and then uh, we're going to look at Michael chapter 2. As I said, this is the reason why I was really blown away, because we are the, the scripture that he has given us during this time is for us to look at chapter 2, talking about the spirit of the breaker. I was blown away because that is our scripture for this pressing in these first seven days of each month to the end of the year. And so we are going to be restored. We're already restored. We need to receive that. We are already recovering. And so the Bible tells us in Michael chapter 2, verse 13, says that the one who breaks open will come up before them. Yes, it will. And they will break out and pass through the gate and go out by it. Their king will pass before them with the Lord at their hand, but it's going to cost you. Uh, it's going to cost you. And so we need to look at the cry. That means that you're going to cry and spare none. You're going to make sure that you tell it like it is. You're not going to be thinking about, you know, you, you want to sacrifice what he is telling us uh, on a, based on a relationship or based on doing whatever it is that's going to make sure that you still be in the click. I don't want to talk. I don't, I don't want to preach. Lord, help me. But this is an opportunity, and this is what he said. Tell them they need to have this personal opportunity to hear the word of the Lord through Micah. Micah was showing us very, you know, very keenly about leaders, about how they have tried to give something that they really don't have, and how they have done things according to filthy lucre. If you read the whole book, and how these leaders tend to abuse, take power and authority, and even now, and abuse those things. And those who may be even out, even now, before I get this word, I know it's Lord talking, with FEMA. And you know that you have not had any water. You know that you've not had any problems. But because water was in your neighborhood or whatever, you had to, you know, go out. I don't know if this is some of the criteria. Only God knows that you do what FEMA tells you to do. But you make sure you understand that the thing that you have in your heart, the thing that you are, or how they say, conjuring up so that you can feel like you can get some of these funds that people that really, really are suffering and cannot get them because of abuse, because of the motivations of the heart of those who are planting and uh, putting together a false accusation, a false uh, claims, you know, we can no longer manipulate and play games. And this is the reason why he wants this word to come out for you to have the opportunity, this personal opportunity to look and see the shape of your faith, to look and see where are you in the justice system about caring and about helping. Where are you socially? You know, where are you? Where are you morally? Okay? And so here we go. Um, he began to give me Michael chapter 2, and he spoke these words, and I want you to write them down, and then I want to share with you before I hang up my devotion and a couple other things that the Lord was speaking about, your personal opportunity. And I want to make sure, as we begin to get into this message, I want to make sure that you understand what opportunity means before I share what that word is. Opportunity means that now you have, an, uh, how do you say, a chance. You have a chance to attain something. Opportunity means that you have the appropriate favor or you have this uh, measure of time for this occasion that God has given us to do a thing. Uh, an opportunity means that you're in, a, in between situations right like now, the condition of something. But God wants to give you a favorable Time to get something done if you would only realize that you cannot continue in the shape that you're in compromising, being lukewarm, being manipulative, and looking at the things that you know that is not right, but yet you repent, but you are only doing false repentance. And so it's an attainment of a goal. That means now you have an opportunity, my God, to look at where you are right now so that you will not fall into this place. 
And I'll talk a little bit more about those who may be at ease in Zion that think because we got past it. I'll talk about that in a minute. But that attainment that he's trying to give you the opportunity to mean he's giving you the opportunity to take action. He's giving you an opportunity to look at the pure truth and the facts so you can achieve what he is trying to get you to achieve. So you can have the favor of God. So you can have the security of God. So that everything that's around you, everything that concerns you, I signed it on Sunday. Hey, my God, Jesus is calling. He's talking to you. I know he is. He's knocking at the door of your heart for where you may be manipulating or cunning. He's knocking at the door of your heart saying, I'm giving you this personal opportunity with me. Mm, I'm trying to slow it down. Let me read to you what he said to me. Micah chapter 2, as I read it, he said these words before I even began to read the chapter. He said, seeking to know my faith is what they do, my daughter. But they are in a fraud place. I was really, really, oh, my God. But they're in a fraud place. He said, tell them to embrace reality, and they will know and see my hand in such times as these. He says, I am not asleep. Their eyes slumber and are blind to my truth. Their ears are dull to my will and my ways. He said, warn them, they have this personal opportunity to turn around and you will know that I've given you this opportunity. You still have this time. And he closed out with this. These these words just touched my heart. Tell them I love them. It may appear, my God, my God, it may appear that in all this that you're going through, where's the love from our daddy? How can you let people drown? How could it let people be robbed and put in harm's way that's trying to help others? But our daddy God is so sovereign. He sees all. He knows all. And what stood out to me is when he said, I am not asleep. Like we slumber. Like we turn a deaf ear. And so in this message, I pray that you would take it to hear the spirit of the Lord, what he is saying for your personal opportunity. We are prophetic people. We all are. You don't have to be with a name prophet to know that God gives us weight and warning, what he is trying to show us. And the warning simply that he has shown us, Michael is showing us, and that many of us have abused the opportunity that he has given us to have the fine things, to be able to do the things that he's given us, write books, to be able to minister to others through our gifts. But we are beginning to become spiritual pimps and prostituting the word of God. This warning of pride, this warning of greed, this warning of being connected or being a part of the status quo, this warning of making sure that you be in with whoever it is, look like they're large and going somewhere. But this leadership abuse, you have a perfect time right now to take this personal opportunity to check your own heart, to spend the time to think about, am I really, really exemplifying a blood-bought, sanctified people? Hear God, we must take this personal opportunity to make sure that we don't get the thinking that, We are so perfectly secured. Like I showed you in that scripture that he gave me in Psalm 32, that the water will not come nigh me. I'm not silly enough to think just because he loved me enough and graced me. I'm not perfectly secured. There's no such thing other than his perfect will and his perfect peace. Isaiah 26 and 3 tells us that. That would keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on me because he trusted in me. And this is what he is trying to get us to see. You have the opportunity to begin to cleanse yourself, to take a good look. Why? Because his cleansing is not over. I hate to make the announcement. It's not over. But he is trying to sound the alarm through me that he is going to make sure that he opened the eyes and the ears of those who are at ease in Zion. We cannot get comfortable because we've been graced. We cannot think that that's all it is about in the natural where there's storms and water 
coming to do his spiritual cleansing. No, it can go beyond that. These next times that we're about to face now, you have this personal opportunity to see. Do I need to look at the cleansing of my mind and the state of my heart? Who have I not forgiven? Who have I not repented to? You know, what's going on really in my house? What's really going on in my church? Am I really, really uh, browbeating the sheep and letting them stray abroad and become vagabonds because of my control and my manipulation for filthy lucre's sake? Or is there any personal relationship that I have not really, really repented to get myself back in place so that I can see and hear God in the spirit? Micah is showing us, if you really look at this chapter, that we are equally as guilty if we stay in these places that you know that it's lukewarm and that they are not truly preaching the gospel, that they're only there to get what they need for their own filthy lucre gain. Am I telling you to leave the church? No. I'm, am I telling you to disconnect with someone? No. I'm telling you if you get in the face of God, he will reveal to you, as he said, you will be able to see. You will be able to hear. And you can only gain that. You can only gain that prophetic revelation. You can only gain that wisdom to know. You can only gain that perfect peace. I, I think. You can only know his perfect will. You can only have that perfect security in his perfect will, in his perfect way. My God, for his perfect peace. And it's only going to be able to be done in his presence. It's going to cost you. It's going to cost you to get off the face of it. It's going to cost you to shut the phone down. You can check on your family and all that. But during these first seven days, we've got to be very, very significantly sharp so that we can hear God concerning what is he saying while we are in the midst of his cleansing. Lord, have mercy. And so if you are truly a blood-bought soldier, I want to say this to you, those that are leaders. He's speaking to you. Michael is very clear that many of the leaders there are motivating people. They're not motivating them spiritually to be able to hear God and to grow up spiritually. They're they're manipulating them. They're abusing power. They're abusing authority. And remember what the scripture tells us in Jeremiah 23 and 1. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep. He said, of my pasture, declares the Lord. He says, therefore, thus says the Lord God of Israel concerning the shepherds who are tending my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not attended to them. Behold, I am about to attend to you for the evil of your deeds, declares the Lord. And so let me share this last piece with you, and I'm going to get off of here and and, uh, give you my devotion for the day. As I begin to uh, meditate, in our space and uh, begin to look at how some people, they have no concern about those who are really going through, they don't even know how to get a hold of FEMA. But isn't it amazing that people who know that they don't even really need the FEMA money, that they know how to get on the systems and all that, it won't help nobody else uh, learn how to get on the systems to get what they need. I'm telling you right now, even if you've already done that, repent. And you need to go help somebody for what you have done. Go help somebody else to really get what they need. Help them log on. Go spend the day with them and help them show them how to get on the system when you know you have cheated the system. And maybe God will grace you for that fraud that he spoke about in this message. And so the the message of Micah is very, very significant. He's talking about one other thing that I want to give, and I want to give the word, uh, my my message for the day. He wants to take uh, an examination to look to see why are we in this place that we continue to try to judge and have this hard, this controlling, this narcissistic, and this Eli? Oh, I guess if you call it Eli, we got a lot of names we can call them, Ahab, uh, Jezebelic type of leadership that tends to mask this false rulership where many of us, are running away from churches and are not being connected to the body. And so this is what he's saying, woe unto you, leader. Read the entire book of Micah, but read chapter 2, that you may pray for the spirit of the breaker to not only break those things off of your life that so easily beset you, 
but that you would pray for the spirit of the breaker prophetically to rest on your life, that you'll be able to pray and break things off the lives of those who are held hostage in the clutches of hell. Lord, help us all today. And so in this message, Micah is talking about uh, the denunciation, the unmasking of these type of false, fake rulerships. And we need to make sure that we look at these particulars that, uh, as I was doing my study, how he's teaching about this false authority, this fake process of saying certain things for the chicken and ear. He said that we need to make sure that in this message, as he began to deliver this to me, to you now, that we need to look at these three particulars that Micah named. He talked about the uh, sections of different types of rulers that were in different categories. If you read the book, you will see. He talked about the evil princes, uh, 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 these princes that were over. And he talked about the spiritual uh, or the type of priestly garments and things that we do to look, how they say, spiritual. Then he talked about the moral responsibility and the morality, I'm sorry, the immoral type of prophets that we have today that were prophet lie for filthy lucre. He was showing us our failures. He was showing us our disorder. And we need to get prepared even now as we begin to look at how deep is my sin. We need to look at the prophets concerning his message, that we are not prophesying, but we're giving divination. We're giving witchcraft. We're giving sorcery type of messages. He wants to be prepared. It is God's will that we speak and prophesy what he is saying, not what we believe can draw the people to us and all these different social networks for filthy lucre's sake. And so he wants to take this examination to look at what's going on at the head where you are. What's going on at the head? Talking about the church house. What's going on at the head where you are? Talking about your family house. What's going on in your head? talking about your physical body house. Lord, help us all. And so I don't want to stay on here any longer. I just wanted to spend a few minutes to talk to you about this word. It really shook me. Please recognize. Please do your spiritual assessment. This is your opportunity now that you won't be sitting in a place that you know that it's not of God, that you know that it's not even doing the ministry of God, but you're there for whatever reason. Maybe they let you preach. Maybe there's a big church. But many of them are hirelings, and it is not God's will that we corrupt his word with this fraud type of leadership of hireling, of abuse. My God, help us today. And so I wanted to say that to you because so go at the head, so go at the body. But yet we can still be in peace. We can still begin now taking our responsibility to make it personal, to renounce, and to fast and pray that God would remove the things from within us and from around us that is not of him. And so you don't have to worry when you know that you've given everything that you can to God because he's looking at your character, he's looking at your motive. And he's looking at what are you truly doing to show my love in this last day? What are you truly doing to get your house and your life in order? So here it is, my word, and I'm going to get off that he gave me for today. In my personal time, in my devotion, I want to share it with you because I think for such a time as this, it is so necessary. He said, seek me with your whole being. I desire to be found by you, and I orchestrate the events of your life with that purpose in mind. When things go well and you are blessed, you can feel me smiling on you. When you encounter rough passages, he's talking about patches, meaning getting some kinks or hitting some, some bad spots. He says, when you encounter rough patches along your life journey, trust that my light is still shining upon you. My reasons for allowing these adversities may be shrewded, 
in mystery you wonder. But my continual presence with you is in an absolute promise. Just isn't that powerful? My continuous presence with you is an absolute promise. It says, seek me in good times, seek me in hard times. You will find me watching over you. Here it is. Not some of the time, all of the time. Well, God bless you. I pray this message blessed you. And remember what he said to me in this message that really stood out. Tell them to embrace reality, and they will know and see my hand. In such times as these, I'm not asleep, he says, but yet their eyes slumber and are blind to my truth. Their ears are dull to my will and my ways. The most importantly, he said, tell them, I love you. Mm. Well, I'm going to meditate on that. Please share this message. God bless you, and I'm praying on this side for you concerning what you may be facing. So, Father, I thank you. That in Jesus' name that you're touching their lives, you're beginning to open our eyes, God, that we may be sensitive in the spirit to hear what you're saying. That we may realize that we cannot be at ease in Zion. And that we do not have this perfect security, but we do have this perfect peace in you. And so I speak that over you even now, that the perfect peace of God would rest and rule in your life. And that this opportunity that he is giving you, that you would take that. And take it and give this, how they say, internal assessment of what needs to be cleansed in you and around you. God bless you. Love you. In Jesus' name I pray.